Um, um, let's see. Hope I'm fine with that. Right? Uh, but I'm not just generally happy. If I'm generally anything, I guess I'm generally miserable. <laughs> Norma Jean Baker was born on June 1, 1926 to a paranoid schizophrenic named Gladys Baker. Norma Jean would face an extremely difficult childhood in the darkness of various orphanages, foster homes, and later on, face an extremely difficult adulthood in the flashing lights of thousands of paparazzi amidst the chaotic world of Hollywood. Attempting to withdraw herself from the poverty and sexual abuse that surrounded her, she began to idolize various actresses she watched on television, which then motivated her to get away from the tumultuous life she lived and start anew. Norma Jean would transform herself from a freckled-faced brunette to the platinum blonde with bright red lips that we all know and remember fondly, Marilyn Monroe. The endless fascination of the world's most prominent sex symbol continues to be discussed today. More importantly, her tragic death seems to continue to gain attention in the fields of mental health and national media, which begins to beg the question, who really was Marilyn Monroe? Human beings are social creatures. We prioritize the social relationships that we develop with others throughout our lives, especially during childhood. The attachments that we create during our early childhood development have been proven to have a great impact on how we handle our adult relationships. Attachment theory explores how these early experiences shape our personalities and how our personalities interact with our future relationships, whether they be with family, friends, or significant others. Considering that Marilyn never knew the identity of her father and her mother was institutionalized for the majority of Marilyn's childhood, there were never any concrete attachments made. Within two weeks of her birth, Marilyn was placed in the first of what would be a succession of foster homes, guardianships, and orphanages. When her mother would eventually appear, she would attempt to steal Marilyn back from these various people, which only ended up with the authorities once again taking her mother away, leaving Marilyn alone time after time. This experience convinced her that she was a mistake a person easily abandoned. Marilyn never experienced a primary caregiver with whom she can create a real attachment and use them as a secure base to run to when something went wrong. Therefore, when it was time to internalize the attachments that she had made as she grew older, she grew to have a negative view about herself and the turmoil of relationships began to unwind. It can be assumed, based on later events of her life, that Marilyn had developed an anxious attachment. Someone with an anxious attachment is nervous that another person will never truly love them back. This can be interpreted through her three failed marriages and self-image issues that greatly affected her mental illness. Not being able to find acceptance from others and even herself was what motivated Norma Jean to create this Marilyn Monroe persona. Yet, it seems that the more she climbed up the ladder of fame, the more alone she felt. She felt a complete disconnect from who she was and who the world had understood her to be. The most desired woman in the world could not have a happy marriage or keep any long-term friends. One of the most heartbreaking quotes that was said by one of her directors and people that knew her the most, Billy Wilder, said, Her marriages didn't work out because Joe DiMaggio found out that she was Marilyn Monroe, and Arthur Miller found out that she wasn't Marilyn Monroe. While on a luncheon with another close friend, she disappeared into the restaurant's bathroom and did not return for a long while. When found, Marilyn was staring into the mirror and when asked what she was doing, she replied, looking at her. Seeing this alter ego or this different persona was a constant reminder to Marilyn that this blonde bombshell is not who she really was. Yet, based on her past, it is reasonable to understand why the persona of Marilyn Monroe came into existence in the first place. The self-determination theory is made up of three major components that explain much of human behavior, autonomy, competence, and relatedness. These are basic needs that human beings yearn for in order to feel that they are living a fulfilling life. Marilyn lacked a sense of autonomy or control in her life as a child. Her whole childhood consisted of strangers telling her what to do and how to do it, which made her want to stray away and become a person who can make her own decisions. Competence or learning new effective life skills was a motivating factor for Marilyn. She knew that if she did not work extremely hard to become famous, she would forever be stuck as broken Norma Jean. 
Having no prior experience in acting, Marilyn took advantage of every opportunity that would throw her into the limelight. Achieving these new skills is what would help her achieve the new life that she desired so much. Lastly of the three, and the greatest challenge for Marilyn of all, was relatedness. Relatedness or feeling connected to others is what brings us the most happiness and the greatest sense of belonging to a group. If none of these three are satisfied in the long run, the individual will become mentally unhealthy and unhappy. Marilyn thought that this creation of this famous ditzy blonde would allow her to start a new tabula rasa or a clean slate. It was supposed to be a new life. Yet, as most celebrities can vouch for today, it becomes more difficult to achieve these three components the more famous a person becomes. No one could relate to the great Marilyn Monroe even though so many people wanted to be her. As hard as she tried to be taken seriously in the acting business, many directors and media portrayed her as the dumb blonde. Although now her true talent can be seen and that the dumb blonde was only a facade, it must have been difficult at the time to show her talent when walking into a room of people that are already assumed that they knew her. So, since she could not fulfill the self-determination theory as Norma Jean, she attempted to do so as Marilyn Monroe. Yet with no luck, she was back to where she started and her mental health only declined more than ever. Being that it was both Marilyn's dream and goal to become an idol, it can be said that she did not actually live long enough to witness the legacy that she made in the history of Hollywood. After competing against other famous women, exploiting herself in magazines such as Playboy, and eventually having a mental breakdown and walking herself away from the world, she would begin to have doubts about her own mental stability. Marilyn displayed so much neuroticism in her life that she depicts each of the three techniques of Karen Hornet's anxiety coping methods at different times throughout her 36 years of living. A person coping with an immense amount of anxiety can go three different directions, moving towards, moving against, and moving away. Moving towards people is an attempt to connect with others in order to reduce anxiety. As noted previously, Marilyn spent her whole life attempting to find someone who would accept the troubled soul that she was. At the age of 16, she married James Daughtry, followed by Joe DiMaggio and Arthur Miller. Simultaneously, as she was trying to get a man to love her the way she wanted to be loved, she wanted the world to love her. She wanted to be a star during a time where there already were stars. Therefore, she used the moving against method by exploiting herself and her body to gain attention. She appeared in Playboy and various other modeling opportunities that she was offered in order to make a name for herself. Most notably, Marilyn Monroe's anxiety eventually turned for the worst and she ended up in a mental hospital. Using the name Faye Miller, she signed the papers to admit herself, but quickly found out that she was being escorted not to a place where she could rest, but to a padded room in a locked psychiatric ward. For the remainder of her days, she insisted on a moving away technique, trying to find peace within herself by trying to avoid others and work on her severe emotional fragility. She had attempted suicide in the past and would eventually be found in her room on August 5, 1962, found dead from a drug overdose in her home, this time an actual suicide. What makes you so sad? I think you're the saddest girl I ever met. This man never said that. I'm usually told how happy I am. That's because you make a man feel happy. It goes on your head. You must think I was born yesterday. Well, sometimes there's just no other possible explanation. See what I mean? Not very bright. Say, 
Hey, they told me you were stupid. You don't sound stupid to me. I can be smart when it's important, but most men don't like it. Thank you. 